Sorry, it's a Europa League knockout match later on, but first a little warm up against our old friends Espanyol. Let's get started. So this is the Europa League knockout first round situation. Tenerife, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid. All four of us dropped down from the Champions League. What are the odds on that, by the way? Someone welcome out. Bill Bell on the other side of things from the Europa League already. Sociedad, top their group. They await in the second knockout round. There is a genuine chance there will be six Spanish teams in the knockout stages beyond this. Since we last met, of course, the match against Sociedad, in fact, which we won 3-0, we played two more games against sides that are in the relegation spots. 1-0, 3-1 away from home. Gary on the score sheet again, he assisted one of the Coito goals. He had a lovely game in that one, so he's finding a little bit of form now. Zukic I've abandoned. We've loaned Mislav Orsic from Chelsea just because I need someone who's going to function on the left-hand side, perhaps. So far, so all right. He's only played one of the matches because he was tired for the other. 15 stamina. Apparently not enough to play two games in a week. Outbound news is the sad loss of Leonidas Okonoimu, who was the pretty much the entire reason I got Kularis in in the first place. Sorry, Kularis, for the, putting you through all that. All the big teams came in for him, so I had a bit of a struggle to try and hold on to him there. Did have a release fee of 1.3 million, in fact. Sold him for 1.1 and 50% profit. I think I finagled that quite well. For another 200 grand, they could have had him without a profit future thing. Other club news involves... More youth facility and training facility improvements. We've improved the youth recruitment again as well. Buying stadium, I don't even mention that. I put, it, I put it to them at the beginning of the year. We might be buying the stadium. I also should say that those two wins against 19th and 20th do see a second on merit, pretty much. Bill Bow, two games in hand, but their goal difference. And I think the head-to-head -head is in our favour. It is not. We do play them again, though. So two games in hand, they've got the head-to-head. -head. They will go ahead of us. But we are comfortably ahead of Barcelona, and we are comfortably ahead of Le Atletico Madrid, which is not a situation I thought I'd be in. Also, the La Liga top scorer, Roulette, has thrown out a new top player in Bardi. Last year, of course, it was RDT. Clearly not scoring as well for Espanyol this time round, which, of course, is the game I'm playing now. OK, this is bafflingly blank. Apart from the changes, I appear to have got the tactic perfect, according to my assistant manager, which... Mark, Marky Kanders, folks, a broken football manager. One thing annoyed me, Machu has agreed to join Atalanta. I would have been tempted to sign him permanently at the end of the year if I didn't if I knew he was actually out of contract then. So for this one, the lineup will be meriting goal, Lodi on the left, Zikos, Quiros, Poro, Sitalo just had a little bit of a knock, not fully fit apparently, Antov and Herrera, Monchu, Herrera now registered by the way, Orsic and Gary, Koita up front. Herrera will be featuring in the next match. Advincula of all players kicked up a fuss about not being in the Europa League registrations. I had to leave someone out. We haven't got any homegrown club players, so sorry, Lewis. Bizarrely, unregistering Zukic didn't have an effect. But there's their team. De Thomas still in their lineup, so he's just not scoring as well this year. And we're in the away kit, so we can't see any of our players' names. And off we go. I don't know why I did that as if I was at the Greyhounds. It was a thrilling first 23 minutes. Pedro Parra is getting a talking to. No cards being shown there. Vargas has got a free kick, and I am concerned by this. Thank God that missed, because Merrick didn't move, which I tend to find helps when you're trying to save a shot. Loddy has been tackled by RDT. He slid in late there. Is RDT being sent off? We're not going to see a lot of RDT. He's gone for an early bat, and they've gone very central as a result. How is Vargas playing as an inverted winger in the middle of the pitch? I have broken the game. Sorry, folks, just realised I was a little bit low down there. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Highlight from kickoff. They've been put through... Hang on. Oh, I'm not sure. No, Merit's fine. Merit's fine. Merit's fine. Concerning. It might have been, it might have been problematic if, if their player had gone for it, but thankfully they didn't. Gary now, though, on this right-hand side. He's assisted in the last match, and he's assisted in this match. Hector Herrera from the edge of the area. My mouth couldn't comprehend that rhyming scheme. Hector Herrera from the edge of the area has done a... Done, he's done a thing, is what he's done. Gary here finds Herrera on the edge of the area, and I'm not going to stop saying it. That, that is how the Volantes work. They just lurk and arrive at the edge of that area, Frank Lampard style. Frank was actually a little bit more in the box, I think, usually. Frank's more the uh, central midfielder attack person in this situation. Sergi Dada, Malsa, Vargas. They're playing around quite nicely. Melendo heads on to no one, thankfully, and Orsic will pick up this ball and hopefully run a bit. And you can see here, Orsic playing a little bit more inwards, a little bit more in inwards. He's got Lodi on the left. Lodi's going to take on the defender. It's gone back to Orsic, who's just lurking there. Gary at the back post. 
He assisted and scored in the last match, and that could have been the goal to repeat. And now Vargas is playing a winger in a central midfield position. What's, what's happening? Antov. Vargas. <laughs> Antov with a futile attempt to bring the ball back there. I hope you all saw that. 30 Dada Vargas. Orsic now gets the ball and loses it immediately. Melendo. Vargas. It's put Melendo through here. Whether he's onside or not will be seen in a moment. I think he I think he was. As Espanol, don't know what to do with Vargas. Right, we've had 13 shots on target here. Do I need to look into signing Elazabel here? Because clearly he's the best goalkeeper in the world. I'm actually going to replace my front three here. Callado, Zukic and Araujo all coming on. Monchu was a consideration, but Monchu with a free kick now. About to prove why he's staying on the pitch. Nope, Quiros has headed in. And is that Zukic with the assist? Good God. As we finally put a second goal in. Good Lord. Zukic has done a thing in a game. What is happening? I have broken the game. I have broken the game, clearly. As the board in the background says, lost for words. I'm a bit, yeah. Oh, what? This better not be a big one. Knee. Oh. Quiros was subjected to a lot of bids on deadline day. He did want to go to either club that came in, thankfully. So that wasn't an issue. But could have got 12 million, I think, the highest it got to. No, he's going nowhere, but now he's been injured. I don't have anyone to replace him, so I'm just going to have to do this for now and hope for the best. I've got no more subs. 10v10. Thankfully, they only got 10 players as well, so this should hopefully see itself out fine. The advantage of having a Volante who's actually really a central defender. Zukic finishes the match with a rating higher than 7. Gary got an assist and finished on 6.8. He was subbed, but it's another than away win, though. Sorry, what? I think Raul did have, like, four games in hand, though. Three games in hand. But yeah, <laughs> Real Madrid. Real Madrid comfortably really top. I should have sold him. What I hate about this is it's saying joint 15th lowest in the league. One player currently injured. Yeah, but it's kind of a big one. The good news is it allows me to replace him in the list. Oh, this is a replacement for the league, not for the Europa League. Right, there's there's someone in a B team that's two stars. He's going to have to do... I'm not going to bring in a free agent. I'll be honest, Paul. I think he's going to miss it for other reasons first. <laughs> I mean, credit to Diogo there. He's out for six months. I'll take a fine, though. Real Madrid lost. I didn't even realise Real Madrid were actually playing at the same time there. Real Madrid lost a match. I still still feel like that they'll comfortably win at least one of their three games in hand. Dusan Tomic has come in with, it looks like Diago Quiros will miss the Euro Cup first knockout round due to injury. Just how much of a disappointment is that? It's incredibly disappointing. I'm gutted. It's such a shame for someone of his quality to be missing out. I've tempted out, <laughs> tempted out a comment, sod you, football manager. Is that the first major injury we've had in this save? Like, genuine first-team injury. Well, the disappointments keep on rolling in. And now's the moment that Suarez kicks us up a fuss. Yeah, Suarez, who's barely played a game this year, apparently he wants a new contract that will reflect his importance to the team, which is squad player. His actual contract is important player. I did. I just offered him a squad player contract. Didn't go well. Sorry, I just skipped past that. Kuros is in team of the week. Stop rubbing it in, game. Koita was amongst the substitutes. Oh, because of the, because of the other game. Yeah, sorry. It's like, he didn't do anything. So for the four Spanish Champions League dropouts, along with Bilbao, this is our chance to join Real Sociedad in the next round and make it about 40% Spanish. I don't know the actual mass. So Antov steps back as actually the same level defender as Quiros. Right then, so with all the situations, Sotalo is suspended as well as the Quiros injury. So second choice backline, that's fun. Merit in goal, Lodi again on the left. Antov and Zikos take the central defensive positions. In fact, Zikos goes on the left. Poro on the right, back position, Konyat and Herrera in the DMs. Monchu, Orsic, Gary, Koita. The front is unaffected, but Konyat comes in being left-footed as well as Antov has moved backwards. Zikos is left-footed, so that makes sense. At least I've got left-footed players on the left-hand side. I do have that capability. Christensen makes the bench as I've only got 19 players who aren't injured, suspended, or and that are actually registered. So one person has missed out. Sorry, Thomas Eisfeld. Remarkably, in terms of the actual first 11, there's only one change to the personnel. Just a lot of people have moved around. We're being talked about as if, we're being talked about as if this is a surefire victory. Their form isn't great. Our form is. Antov's on a yellow card warning as well, which could be problematic come the next round. And as Antov is playing centre-back today, I'm very, very much expecting him to pick up a card. This is one leg as well. I think it's at their place. I'm not sure it's neutral. Lodi on the ball, though. Probably should have checked where we were playing before we played the match. That's on me. Lodi, just still running. Lodi, still Lodi. Still Lodi. Okay, what's going on here? Koita scored. Now, when it comes to Turkish size in the Europa League, I've got a bit of history with them. 
I I may have beaten Besiktas 16 goals to none over the two legs in the group stage of Southampton in the past. And it's 1-0 within three minutes here as the game tries to work out what it wants to do next. Lottie, though, well on side is Coiter. He's behind the defenders. I think he might be just behind the ball anyway. They do have a, they do have a centre-back called Polk, which I love. Lodi, Orsic, Lodi, back to Konya, Monchu, Konyat again. Not got through to the intended target there, but Poirot gathers the second ball. He's run into Herrera. That cost me recently. Gary, back to Herrera. Poro now. He's put the ball in. Orsic doesn't get to that one. And again, we get to the ball. The clearances have not been good for them. Konya, in which to Orsic, Monchu, Koita. Look at the triangles. Pod poro has gone for it. After all that good work, Poro's just smacked it. Keep an eye on all the other ones. I'm fairly certain none of the other Spanish teams are currently winning. 20 minutes in, Gary charges. Still Gary. Gary, who apparently loves a big match. Gary, this is just going to be a poor shot at the end of it, isn't it? Oh, no. It's been cleared. And for a brief, I, I paused for a second because I thought it might have been a penalty situation. But no, it was a clean tackle and they have cleared it. And we've got the ball again. We're working it forward once more. Lodi in all of the space. Lodi's coming in with now. Herrera on the edge. He's, gone, he, he's done another madness. He's done another madness. It's Herrera from the edge of the area again. In fact, this is Herrera from way out of the area. How far out is Hector Herrera here? Lodi finds Herrera on the edge. He's even outside the D of the 18-yard box. That's got to be 20, 25 yards. Yeah, Barcelona. Oh, Real Madrid have gone 1-0 up. But Babel, Atletico and Barcelona still all nil-nil in the other three games. As things stands, we've got the most commanding position out of those five. Lodi. Bill Bell versus um, Hertha Berlin might be a fairly even game. Coiter. Monchu. And it's three. I just love that. That's that's the Frank Lampard. That's the Frank Lampard of the central midfielder attack. Monchu running into the box. As my sister manager tells me, we were getting shots on goal, but with a two-par output to be a regular threat as we score a goal from within the box. We also scored a goal from outside of the box, assisted manager. Clearly, they're a threat from any, everywhere. I think I might need to get a new assistant manager. Lodi doesn't get anyone in there. That was speculative. Shikos. Yeah, which be honest, I feel like Hertha Berlin probably feel most aggrieved by that draw. Of all the teams they could have got, they got Bill Bell. I suppose with there being four Spanish teams on this side, I think they may have to avoid him. I'm not sure you can play country fellow countrymen at this stage of the competition. So really, it was a one in four chance for Hertha. Approaching half time, Barcelona have not scored against Malmo and Atletico Madrid have just scored against Universitate Craiova. I think I actually said that. Did I say that? I feel like, I don't know. I think I caught myself off guard there. I expected to butcher that name and feel like I've come out quite well. I'm going to say, out of all of the teams, they were the ones probably with the easiest draw. It's a, it's a defender who scored as well. It's him and it's very surprising. But it's Bishaksha here with a chance here. I did actually look up how you're supposed to pronounce it, and that is how you deal with the S Sedillas. Sedillas. I'm in Spain. I'll pronounce it Sedilla. Yeah, it is Bishaksha here, I think. The very ending might be different. I'm not certain. As they do go close, and they do have a curious shot at the end of all that. Barcelona still not winning. Bill Bauer, though. Hertha Berlin. Hertha Berlin is the current location of Francisco Trinchao, ironically, um, on loan from Barcelona. He might have been bought from Barcelona. I can't remember. I think I tried to loan him. It didn't go well. Couldn't afford him. Gary's hit the bar. Yeah, why not, Gary? Have a chance. Have a shot. It's only about 20 minutes to go here. I've not really done any changes or tactical stuff. It's been pretty comfortable. Raphael just wanders past players. That's fine. Octe, Mamut is playing between each other now. They've managed to work their way out of that Octe, Mamut deal and fall straight back into it. There we are. We've They've moved... It's a good ball through. In the end, Guliano has a chance. Misses entirely. And at this stage, I think we just take off tyre players. We don't worry about who's available. Callado comes on. Monchu is replaced by Suarez. Uh, Poro's injured, actually. Poro's got a little bit of a knock, so I'm not going to let that go any further than I need to. I don't have a spare right back. I have literally no one who can deal with that. It's normally Sotalo who fills in there, but Sotalo's suspended and the vinkler's unregistered, so problematic. I'm actually going to rest Ren and Lodi instead. I'm actually going to rest Ren and Lodi. Barcelona have finally scored. They've scored twice. We've got a late corner, and it could be a chance for a fourth of the death, but no, Agnan is only close, apparently. Just the three in the end. I was, I was half expecting another Turkish demolition, but a win's a win. Yeah, with three and a half time, I was expecting another Besiktas situation. But 3-0 is absolutely fine by me. 23 shots, three goals. Again, 
conversion is an issue. Well, this is Herrera's episode as Bilbao took it in injury time, uh, extra time. Real Madrid had to go to extra time as well. But all five are through then, I think. Yes, indeed we are. A little bit of money. How many is out for a week, basically? That's fine. Just rest him a bit. I'll do the draw because it is tomorrow. Doesn't say it, but it is tomorrow. It's a new club record as well. I offered him one. He didn't take it. Right, so the 16 teams that remain. Good God. Realistically, we're hoping for one probably Celtic or lower. And I think Countrymen can play each other now. But Shiktas are lurking. So six Spanish teams. One of them comes straight out. So six out of 16 is the situation. That actually might be about 40%. I said it as a joke, but it might be accurate. Chelsea get Atletico. Yes! I said Celtic or lower, I'll take just Celtic. I genuinely fist bumped that I got Celtic there. We'll see how they, see we'll see who the others get. So Bill Bow will play Torino. That's a nice, comfortable one for Bill Bow, I feel like. But shout out to Torino, though, for even getting into it, really. They're never normally there. So Real Madrid will play Leipzig. Barcelona have got Besiktas. Only two draws don't feature a Spanish side. There could genuinely be six out of eight at the end of this. I feel like I feel like the only ones that aren't probably expected to beat their opposition, are Atletico with this situation. Chelsea versus Atletico is probably the most even of the Spanish draws there. I'm expecting at least five in the final eight. But we've got Celtic. I don't know if it's one leg again, but it's going to be played at Celtic. Yeah, seems to be just one leg again. I think this might be because of the Qatar World Cup. But it's only single legs. I'm not sure this is a permanent thing. So it's a trip to Scotland then. I will do that along with a severe match that follows it. Until then, Terrell.